The summit got underway on the Mediterranean island of Malta this morning. The three-day meeting opened by the head of the Commonwealth, Queen Elizabeth II. The Commonwealth nations are drawn from all continents, bound together by history. These nations seek to do more than just have a biennial gathering. For the head of the Commonwealth, it's a homecoming. She once lived here in 1949, before her crowning in 1952. Perhaps her last chogam, as she no longer wishes to travel long distances. I feel enormously proud of what the Commonwealth has achieved and all of it within my lifetime. For more than six decades of being head of the Commonwealth, a responsibility I have cherished, I have had the fortune of the constancy of the Duke of Edinburgh. Next year, the Commonwealth Study Conference, founded by him as what he once described as an extraordinary experiment, dedicated to equipping Commonwealth leaders will itself celebrate its 60th anniversary. At this meeting, the Commonwealth will be charged with demonstrating leadership, often in practical ways, on an agenda of global issues and drawing on the distinctive contribution of our members. I can think of no better way for the Commonwealth to add global value than to focus on these priorities the fight against radicalization, encouraging good governance, embarking on a quest for equality, and being at the forefront of saving our planet. To embark on such an ambitious agenda to add global value, we need a sharp and focused organization. As the momentum builds towards a climate change conference deal in Paris, the gathering will see UN Chief Ban Ki-moon address it as will French President François Hollande. Detractors have often accused this body of being irrelevant, but supporters argue that it has managed to achieve important success in raising issues of human rights throughout its existence, and it wants to raise its voice even louder on global issues. Mzoni Lembech, SABC News, Valletta, Malta.